What is going on everyone and welcome back to another Monster Hunter video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Switch Axe. We're going to be taking a dive, not a deep dive, but we're going to be taking a dive in its history. I have uh, the uh, wiki here pulled up and it's going to, we're going to talk about all of the generations that it came in and how it's like all the ones that it's just been in from there, from where it started to where it is now. Um, and we're going to watch a few videos that kind of help us understand all of these things too and how it looks, where it came from. Again, this is not a super deep dive because I'm not going to read this entire thing, but I will be reading bits and pieces and of course putting in my own two cents to the whole situation as well. But if you are new to the channel, guys, before we get too deep into this, make sure you guys leave a like on the video. It's up to the channel for more Monster Hunter content because we are going to be live streaming. We're going to be talking about things and just having a good time. Now, let's get things started. So the Switch Axe is by far my favorite weapon in the game, and it first came out in Monster Hunter Tri. And Monster Hunter Tri was on the Wii U and you had to use like the the controller we'll say it looked like this because it kind of looks like this it's just a little thinner but you would move it like this and slash and all this stuff just with different animations and it was kind of fun it really hooked me into the monster hunter series and i was using the sword and shield at first but i slowly got into the switch axe it's just a very amazing weapon, it was super fun. There was also underwater fighting, which uh, we discussed in one of my other previous videos. I do miss it, but again, this is not about underwater fighting, this is about the Switch X. <laughs> now, let's get into the official description of the Switch X here. Um, again, we're not reading the entire thing. We're just not. Um, all right, so. The switch axe known as the slash axe in japan i actually like that name that's really cool um is a blade master weapon class first introduced in monster hunter Tri, and is present in portable third which is a game that i haven't played um mh3u which is another one that i have not played monster hunter 4 monster hunter 4 ultimate or um you also call it um oh no you don't so i, have, I haven't played four uh, Monster Hunter Generations and then Mon Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I have played Generations Ultimate. Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter Iceborne, Rise, and Sunbreak. And then, of course, it's going to be in Wilds. Um, it was also introduced in Frontier series called Monster Hunter Frontier G10. So out of all of these, I've played Tri. It's where I first got into the game. I've played Generations Ultimate. I've played World, Iceborne, of course, Rise, Sunbreak. And then I'm going to be playing Wilds. Weapon has transformation capabilities with one blade shifting while being sheathed as well as sliding to a different position It changes the attack style. Its secondary form, the weapon behaves far differently from its standard variation and uses a file of specialized coding to add certain effects to a weapon. This weapon is able to overload this file, ending in a concentrated burst. It consists of two forms, the sword mode and the axe mode. Now, we're not going to read this whole thing, but we will just kind of generally sum it up. Um, the axe possesses a great range and can be or can hit difficult to reach parts of the monster very easily, especially with the rising slash, which can hit even a rat's wing while they're flying. Um, <clears throat> it has potential to do an infant combo with limited stamina. It consists of swinging the axe very quickly from left to right. So this is the wild swing there. Now, the axe mode, as they just said, it is uh, used to close the distance. You can also use it with the um, wild swings. This does drain your stamina, but if you do have something that gives you unlimited stamina, you can just keep on hitting the monster forever as long as your stamina is there, right? Which is really, really cool. And obviously they change this in different variations of the game and how this works, but it's really cool. All right, so next you have the sword mode, which uses a file. It looks very similar to the great sword in its form. So when you are holding it, it does look like the great sword, how you hold that. But this is much faster. Um, it's not as strong as the great sword, but it's faster. The player can simply hit with vertical or horizontal combos to benefit the file and effect. 
and it can also make a concentrated burst or discharge um so they call it the zero sum discharge is what it's called after a forward slash the weapon will rise while dealing damage and then it can uh, produce a powerful explosion that produces recoil and makes the weapon refer to axe mode of course the move set will be set to benefit from the file effect now in previous games when you did use this powerful explosion you hit your teammates and they would go flying this is something that they've changed and fixed and i think monster hunter rise they fixed the whole thing um there was a wire bug move that does you know cause you to make people fly but i think they fixed that too i'm not 100 percent sure i can't fully remember um the time spent in sword mode is limited to an energy meter which looks like this um they show you right here so this is the sword file here usually the energy meter is on the sword like you can see there's a little gauge and that's you know what we're used to now but when that gauge runs out you have to recharge it um oh, i guess here it is right here so it shows that um it can recover over time like if you're not using it like so if you're in axe mode that meter does refill but if you're using it in sword mode just over and over and over and let's say you go down to 40 percent you have to recharge it so if you're in sword mode and it's at that 40 percent mark and you're trying to swing it or i guess it automatically reverts to axe mode whenever it's time to recharge but if you're swinging it like if you're trying to go into sword mode you will do an animation that automatically recharges the sword um now let's talk about the files here again we're not reading every single thing you have a power file this is just going to give you the most raw damage you have your elemental file you have your dragon files so of course elementals water fire thunder you know that so that's just the type of file that it is so you'll just have um when your sword is charged you will do whatever file damage that you have so let's say you're going against someone like back in the Milo who's weak to water you're going to want a water file and then when your file is full on your sword you will do extra water damage so you have dragon file you have poison file you have paralysis file you have exhaust file which was introduced in one of the earlier games so it didn't this wasn't here same thing with poison i think both of these were introduced um in one of the earlier variations of the game but exhaust is one of my favorite files because you can make the monster tired and you can also stun them which is really cool okay so we are going to talk about monster hunter uh third and then through you and so on and so forth but first this is going to bring us to our first video this is monster hunter try Again, this is when the first the game was first introduced. So we're gonna look at the overview video. All these are overview videos. They're all about two, they're all about 20 seconds long or something like that. But we're gonna just take a peek at these. So again, this is the game that I was first introduced into the game. <laughs> just look at how the graphics like this is crazy. Like this is your zero sum. Sounds pretty cool too. All right, so that's a quick overview. So it looks like they're wearing the uh, Wrath armor. Then they have the Burial Switch Axe there. I mean, moves are very simple. It's very short. Um, I don't think the weapon was like super mobile at that time. It just didn't exist. Mobility was not a thing. <laughs> so it was just quite interesting at that point in time. Um, so that is going to just kind of fit in this category here of the weapon they changed the icon of it um they introduced more switch axes and they kind of talk about the ones that they did bring in um one problem that was difficult in uh is the hack and slash combo was easy um to make your person very vulnerable so when you're doing your hack and slash stuff you're more likely to get slapped by the monster and you get destroyed uh strength attacks are weaker than try or and I guess this wasn't that one wasn't try that we watched, but so this is just after Monster Hunter try. But they made the attacks much weaker because in try, I guess it was a little overpowered. But hey, we like those things. 
And then they also introduced the exhaust file and then the poison file as well in Monster Hunter 3rd. And then next was 3U. Um, in 3U, the switch axe is, um, you can get it from the beginning of the game. So in try, I think you had to unlock it. And then obviously the same thing is going to be in third. You had to unlock it as well. They give you a bone axe, which is cool. So now that's kind of the standard. Now when you play the game, you just get the switch axe. And this is just when it started to happen. Okay. Uh, the file indicator icon was also changed. The weapon sub paths from try are diminished. And most of the latest weapons are available with additional of three used new paths. And then the blood animation of elemental discharge is minimized like it was in try. So apparently in this one, there was a lot more blood and people just didn't like it and wanted to change it. And, you know, that is totally fine. <laughs> so in the fourth generation, which is Monster Hunter 4 and Monster Hunter 4, you which is again is a game that I have not played and I don't have the trailer. I have the GU one, which I would assume kind of looks like four. But we'll talk about that because that is the fifth generation. And there's a lot to unpack there, but we're not gonna go into super detail. Now in the fourth generation, the weapon um, receives minimal additional moves in the ax mode, which now allows players to execute a cyclone finisher. As you saw in the previous trailer, whenever there was no wild swing animation, there was no overhead swing um, because it just didn't exist at that time which them making that change is one of the best things that they've done for the axe mode itself because whenever i was first playing a monster hunter try you never really wanted to use the axe mode i mean there was no reason to again it can close the distance on certain things but it wasn't like spectacular um but now they have the cyclone finisher added to finish off with or when you're doing the wild swing you finish off with the cyclone finisher uh, this attack can link to a morphing slash, which is really cool. The swords mode uh, moveset now consists of double diagonal slash, which in some games they kind of took it out. Um, like in the next one we're going to talk about, you had different styles and one of the arts took out the double slash, which <laughs> I guess it outweighed with other things that were there, which is just kind of cool. All right, next, we're going to talk about the fifth generation, which is also known as Monster Hunter Generations. But before we get into that, we are going to look at this quick little overview again from um, Monster Hunter's page. Now, this is Generations Ultimate, so this is just after Generations. So it's this, they're showing the other things that they added, right? And one of them was Demon Riot, which is something that we do see a little bit. We see a little bit of it in um, Monster Hunter Wilds whenever they do have their in sword mode. There's this aura around the sword. So this is kind of what this is. So these are different hunting art styles. So the, what we just saw, this is called Aerial Switch Axe. So you can jump off the monster and then you can hit him with a zero sum discharge or you can hit him with whatever attack that you want, uh, whether it's the sword or the axe. This mode is just an easier way to um, mount or wyvern ride the monster, but it's just mounting. And then it also had that. I believe this is striker style where whenever you're doing your discharge, you get two additional attacks on it, which is kind of cool. All right, this is one of the Hunter arts. So you do your wild swings and then you do your overhead and then you do all of this, like this whole combo. It was very hard to get off, but it's just really cool, right? It's like really badass to see. So now you see they're starting to add a little bit more extra flair to the weapon, which is something that we always wanted. I mean, it's an amazing weapon. Don't get me wrong. Amazing weapon. They just added a little bit more flair. All right. Uh, this weapon, like all the other weapons, allows dodging in all four directions. Backward dodging. Have a player roll on axe and step in sword mode. So, simply said, if you have the axe out, you're going to be dodging differently from when you have the sword. When you have the sword, you just kind of sidestep. But whenever you have your axe, you can literally roll. 
Um, the weapon now has an amps mechanic on sword mode. Uh, by landing enough hits on the sword mode, the weapon enters its amp state. So when we go up here, again, like I was saying, on the sword bar, it'll show you the amp state. And whenever you are in your amp states, that's whenever you can do your different damages with your files. <clears throat> um, now we have the morphing attack can be formed and chained better, which is just phenomenal. That's something that we do love. <laughs> Um, again, we just talked about this when it's in your amp state, you can now discharge different attacks, whatever your file types are, that's what you'll, you know, do. And then in the axe mode, it retains all your movesets from previous generations, which is good. After some attacks, you can now move forward. Again, they're just adding a little bit more mobility because like I said, in try and then the previous versions before generations, According to this, because again, the, I didn't play a lot of them, but you weren't as mobile as you are now. And obviously in further generations, we're going to talk about more mobility because they just made it more mobile. Um, in the sword mode, they added more to the combo list on the attacks that you can do. The secondary combo, you can do a 360 slash. Once, whenever you do this 360 slash, it actually gives you more gauge to um, for your sword to get an ant mode the discharge attack is instantaneous if executed after the slashes and putting morphing attack plus backward will execute a morphing fade slash so like i said they're just adding a little bit more mobility they're adding a little bit more attacks to the weapons just to make it a little bit more interesting now we have monster hunter world slash iceborne now we're going to look at this overview here and then after that, we're going to go rise and then, you know, we're going to finish out the whole series. All right. So now at this point, we see the graphics are a whole lot better. They changed the whole UI system. They changed the whole world itself because now we're diving a little bit deeper into probably the best generation of this game in a lot of people's eyes. Okay, and then this is a wild swing. And you see now this weapon has this glow. This is the amp state here. When you're in the amp state, like I said before, you can see when they're hitting the monster, they're proccing even more damage, but that's um, just depending on what file you have. And I love that game. I mean, a lot of people just really like Monster Hunter World. A lot of people, I, I, if people ask me what's the first Monster Hunter game I should play, I normally would recommend Monster Hunter World. For you and GU and all that stuff, they are cool, but you just got to do a lot more in those things, like with catching bugs and fishing and making your nets and making your fishing rods and all that stuff. It's too much. Um, so Monster Hunter World just introduces a just more, it's a faster start. It, you don't have to grind as much as you do in the older games, but that's besides the point. All right, so in Iceborne, like all the other weapon switch acts, um, you now have the slinger and clutch claw tools at your disposal. Um, the clutching attacks are only used in sword mode or axe mode. Uh, the X mode combos reverted back to the classic pattern where the attacks from idle and the follow-up thrust attack and overhead slash and not the side slash. Then you have your slinger burst. You also have wild swings, of course, and now you can do the heavy slam at the end of it. The heavy slam is the same thing as the, um, uh, I forgot what it was called, but it was like the overhead whatever attack. I forgot what they called it. Here, the cyclone finisher. It's... Or actually, they're not the same thing. The Cyclone Finisher is what we saw in the other trailer. But the Heavy Slam is just after your wild swinging, and then you do an overhead attack. That's the Heavy Slam. Um, in the Sword Mode, they're just talking about the Clutch Claw using the sword. If clutching the attack makes contact with the sword in the normal state, the Hunter will cling to the monster. 
Um, if clutching attack is done with the sword in its amp state in the middle of the element discharge, the hunter will execute a clinging discharge attack instead of um, instead without needing a needing to reinitiate another element discharge. The clutching attack link can still be done from the amp sword mode, but only if the initial thrust did not make proper contact. So again, in worlds, they made it much prettier. You can actually, um, I don't know, enjoy the movements and fighting the monsters a little bit more because things are a little bit faster than what they are in GU. But I don't know, the, the realism of the game is just phenomenal. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to talk about Monster Hunter Rise and we're going to take a look at the overview of the weapon again. And then after that, we're going to check out our final trailer. So, of course, we were introduced into or with the wire bug here. Okay, then you got your wild swings and then there is your powerful overhead attack there. And then now, now you can see the animations a lot better. Whenever you are in the amp state, you can literally see that the weapon looks amped up. And then as you can see, when they're hitting the monster, you can see the amps propping on the monster's head. There's your mobility. You have Invincible Gambit. The switch charger here was very huge, right? And I, I just want to talk about this briefly and then we'll get back to the video. But whenever you are in your sword mode, like we talked about before, um, right at the beginning here, if you use your sword mode and you get it down to 40%, it has to reload or recharge, whichever one you want to say, right? In Monster Hunter GU, which is here, in one of your Hunter Arts, there was an art that you could use to recharge your sword much faster. Um, and this is where it all was introduced. And now in Monster Hunter Iceborne, that mechanic wasn't there where you could easily do that. And in Rise, they added the switch charger. And when you'd use this, it would recharge your sword gauge. And it was by far very game changing. Obviously, or not obviously, but there's also decorations in there in this game too that help recharge your sword. But just having this mechanic introduced into the game this way was just really like game changing. And so now you weren't only more mobile, but you could also recharge recharge your sword gauge. So it's, it's was just amazing. They also got a lot better with their overviews too, by the way. <laughs> but um, I guess we don't really need to go into super detail about all this. The biggest thing was having um, that move that can charge your sword up, giving you way more mobility and just making the making the switch axe way faster and way more mobile than what it used to be. Like way, way, way faster. Um, now we will talk about a couple of things, but not a lot. The file burst changes. This is one of the coolest things that happened in the game. The file burst cannot go critical. The file burst from uh, element damage zero, or sorry, element discharge finisher. Then you got your ZSD, which is your zero sum discharge, compressing finishes discharge, and soaring wyvern blades suck bind, which is super fun. All completely ignore the monster's raw hit zones, dealing raw or fixed raw damage regardless of where you hit. So it didn't matter where you were, it always did good damage, always. Now it wasn't a critical hit again, it was just fixed damage that you will always do. Now I did enjoy Monster Hunter Rise variation of the switch axe, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, you're a lot faster and for some reason the damage feels a lot better. It just did. <laughs> I know they balanced it out and made things make sense, but it just felt like more fun as far as like speed wise. Um, we're not gonna go into any of these things. We're just not worried about all that, but this does bring us to our last and closing video. 
So this is the Monster Hunter Wild Switch X gameplay analysis. This was done by Monster Hunter. So we will get to just kind of look at a lot of the weapons changes, what it can do again. Um, it's not anything super crazy, but it is just something that would just show us the differences between all the other previous generations. And I'm uh, Hello, quite excited about it. Monster Hunter, <laughs> and there are links in the description in case you haven't seen anything yet for all the weapons and the IGN Japan gameplay. Since the information is shown in the weapon chart is universal at this point. I'm okay, so we have the sword gauge still. We have the power axe mode. Which this, I think this was introduced in Monster Hunter World. It's basically the sword gauge mode or the amp gauge, but for the axe to just to make the axe a little bit more stronger. I'm going to summarize what's shown in the IGN playthrough and highlight details that might have been missed. But first, here are all of the attacks that I have confirmed are in this game. So, okay, so the overhead slash, which is great, the forward overhead slash, so this closes distance. The wild swing pairs up with the overhead slash. You have the heavy slam, which is, uh, which, or sorry, heavy slam pairs up with the wild swing. Wild, wild sweeps. Okay, the sword, you have the overhead slash. You have the double and triple slash. That's absolutely amazing. You have the ZSD, you have this discharge, you have the counter, which a counter was also introduced in Monster Hunter um, Sunbreak, which was really, really cool. Then you have your morphing attacks so there. Far. Please feel cool. Things happen. Things are changing. Feel free to include anything that I may have missed in the comments. Heavy Slam requires two swings, just like in Rise, and provides the Power Axe buff, which increases the damage and fill rate from axe attacks. So good. In Iceborne, Heavy Slam buff only affected part damage modifier. While in Rise, it affected both part modifier and amp state fill rate. It seems that in Wilds, it doesn't even touch the amp state. A question I have about hmm. this is if they mean the axe damage increases or just the part modifier again. The sword oh my mode goodness, counter, this looks so damn good. Named counter Rising Slash will consume quite a bit of sword gauge to activate. If you miss or don't parry, oh, attack, wow, okay. it will just slash upwards. However, if you That's do cool. successfully counter, you will take reduced damage, gain a portion of the switch gauge cost back. Oh, so you still take damage swings afterwards. Interesting. I want to formally say that this commenter was correct. Kudos to you, fam. I'm probably going to message you or reply <laughs> to that comment in order to let you know that you were right. Forward overhead slash returns, and I believe it is used good. As helps closing the distance circle as That's it really isn't nice. necessarily shown here in the button guide. This appears to be the new draw attack for the axe mode. Traditionally, draw attacks were side slash. Yep. Offset rising slash seems to have two different properties as this attack string sees its rising once. Man, while the one this just looks so the damn twice. amazing. Perhaps it has an individual use for the triangle plus circle and has the two strikes when done in a combo, such as from side slash or from this new I draw I like how attack. they just made it look so much faster. Regardless, Landing this offset attack will consume health, but also regenerate a large amount of switch gauge on parry. Sweet. The two follow-up options are heavy slam or morph slash. While using heavy slam, you also recover Looks like an anime. amount of gauge as well. And here's where we may have been mistaken with Invincible Gambit, as the animation looks similar, but instead it's the follow-up heavy slam. Yeah. The grapple hook comes out. Attaches to the monster, and then you just go right to him. And the two swings happen. So it's kind of, it looks kind of like the Invincible side. Gambit. Just, just a little about bit. This, the morph attack follow up from this heavy slam variation is actually Morph Rising Double Slash, which was introduced in Rise. Next up, we see Morph Double Slash being used after a failed counter Rising Slash. <laughs> the animation looks wonky, so maybe it isn't finished or polished up yet, but that's definitely it. I like it. The attack didn't generate very much switch gauge, so it might be viable in damage more than meter generation. Also, I noticed the switch gauge doesn't increase with morph attacks anymore unless axe attack lands. Hmm. That's unfortunate, but it might be playing into this game's identity for the weapon. While mounted, you have the option to knife the monster or strike. Oh my axe. goodness, that's so These badass. These actually have decent gauge fill rate, so it might be more beneficial oh, than so stabbing cool. during certain situations. That's cool. So you're 
and other things you just use like a little dagger to attack the monster but you can actually use your weapon that's really badass so it looks like you can do both now thankfully the mounted finisher raises the amp state gauge even though the amount is holy much crap Speaking gives you a little gauge, bit when it's amp not state bad is achieved the switch gauge was actually bumped up significantly take a look at this holy crap release, that Lash was a lot looked quite underwhelming here because of the way it was used rather than positioning to the head the player oh my goodness hind legs, which seems to be a tough spot for doshaga Do dosha doshagama <sighs> Either way, we can see that it consumes a hell of a lot of switch gauge to use it, and you're left with Oh, it does, yeah. Okay. I can see various moves that can follow up this attack, but I wonder if it's worth the follow up. Lastly, if you weren't aware, it's only usable in amp state. One last clip I have for you is this elemental discharge into full release slash, where the player's Jeez. switch gauge was basically near zero. Yeah, only you just one deplete slash it. comes out, which must be due to the meter being empty. I see. Something interesting to note is that full release slash seems to happen faster after a discharge, as opposed to its individual use. Almost like how double slash okay, is elemental discharge works. I see, I see. Last point of interest, the follow-up offset rising slash regenerates a stupid amount of switch gauge. Basically over 30% was regenerated. There's two implications. Either the follow-up attack after full release is designed to grant increased gauge regeneration, or you regen more gauge while below the 30% threshold. Gotta wait to see. Yep. Now that's all I have on the weapons so far. Hopefully down the pipeline, there's more to witness than just this. My personal thoughts on the weapon is that it seems like they got rid of the morph gauge generation of rise. Man, this it it looks so damn good. Axe attacks to give the axe mode some agents. Dodge? Oh, it's I forgot there's the counter. Idea, honestly, and it looks like it has been executed quite well. You create situations where you fully expend the switch gauge, morph back to axe to generate meter, and repeat. What I really want to know is if it's worth it to spam morph double slash considering how much gauge is used up by these sword mode attacks in this game. So I can't wait to get my hands on that demo <laughs> and just poke and prod every detail, but for now, that's all I have for you. Yeah, next time. I can't wait till a demo comes out too. I cannot wait. This weapon is just going to be so phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Well, guys, there you have it. I mean, that is just going to sum up this entire uh, video here. So, like I said, it was a small dive into the Switch Axe's history. And we just finished it up with watching the a little small breakdown of what the Switch Axe can do in Monster Hunter Wild and how it just differs from previous generations. And I will say I am super excited to give it a try. I do hope they drop a demo soon. I know in a few days, like five days, they're going to be dropping another trailer. Hopefully within that, they will be letting us know a demo date because that would just be ultimately amazing. And when that does come out, we are going to be taking a serious deep dive in the switch axe and breaking down every move set. And just I may drop a little tutorial of what I've learned and what I've experienced with it. So you guys stick around again. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys hit the sub button and like the video. If you are liking Monster Hunter content, because I will be dropping two videos a week and potentially one live stream a week as well. But thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.